That's what I'm talking about today. That's what these symbols are for. Like and love. Look at somebody and say, love likes. Love likes. Adamantbeliever.com forward slash love likes. Now, you know I don't like to get up and, reg and, and go back and apologize for something I said. That's hard for me. That's why I say stuff so carefully. But there is something I said years ago, and I just didn't know any better. And I tried to propose that it was possible to love someone without liking them. And you can't. I tried. <laughs> Some folks you want to just love from a distance. You can't. Look at somebody. What? Wait a minute. I've been doing good at that. <laughs> I'm talking about people in this fellowship. Brother and sisters in the fellowship. Amen. In, in the fellowship. <laughs> You feel a little better now. Okay, somebody, somebody exhaled. Like, whoa! I was going to have to join another church. I was going to have to go with the non-Christmas celebrating people. <laughs> yeah, if you're in this fellowship and you're a part of this fellowship, you can't love nobody in this church from a distance. Oh, let me go over to this section. Because I knew it was going to be a rough morning. Besides my ear acting up, I knew that this message right here was going to get in somebody's, yes, yes. Well, no. This is God straightening me out and letting me know, no, nope, no, nope, nope. Some folks are in there. You know, you say one thing and forget you ever said it. Some folks are holding on to dear life for when I said that. No, no, pastor said. I can avoid you and go the other direction. I can just love you with the love of the Lord. And I, I don't even remember when I said it. I, I feel like I said it, but probably, but it was the old building or something. But anyway, I was wrong. Amen. Can, can I be wrong? Have you been wrong? Okay. <laughs> I was wrong about this. So we're going to clear this up today. Look at somebody say, love likes. <clears throat> All right. Saying I love them with the love of the Lord does not excuse us from disliking our brothers and sisters in Christ. So just quit that. How you feel about songs? Oh, I love them with the love of the Lord. <laughs> like that gives you an excuse to really, you really don't like them. But because God said you have to love them, you have to love them. As if there's nothing about them to love. Now, who are we to say that there is a person that has nothing in them worthy of our love? Are we saying that there are people that don't do anything right? Or are we saying that we are better than others? 1 John 4 and 7, beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. Let us love one another. Look at somebody and say, love one another. Love. We got to work on this love thing because many of us had sordid backgrounds and upbringings and different things where love wasn't in our homes growing up. Many of us came from families that could care less didn't show us the love and so we feel like we can reserve our love for certain ones and not for everyone amen that comes from your upbringing that comes from your trauma that comes from what you went through you're the one that you know you have you're selective with who you feel like you like in this body and those that you don't like but you got to like everybody Amen. Amen. I had to learn that. I had to learn. God was like, so there's nothing, nothing about them that, that you can like. And I had to realize, yes, there, there are things about people that are likable. So I can't magnify the thing they did that I didn't like and make it overshadow their entire being. 
especially if they have a family and children and different things. Because when you dislike them, you dislike their family. Now you're disliking the children. Now you're disliking a whole group of people. Then you got to dislike the people that like them. Then you got to try to gather you a group in the church. I know I'm preaching. Amen. We are not going in 2024 with certain things. Amen. We're going to clean it up. I don't want the church to get so big that we just tolerate everything. Some of this stuff needs to be fixed. Amen. We are supposed to not only love one another, but also what? Like one another. Somebody, well, give me a scripture. <laughs> you demon. Here you go. Romans 12 and 10. Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love. Love is in there, but there's some other stuff in there too. Kindly affection one to another. You got to like somebody to be kindly affection. I'll turn around so you can leave. Somebody like this mess, this is the hardest message you've ever preached. I preached about hell and everything. This is the worst one. This is the toughest. You making me come out of myself and come out of my comfort zone. Your comfort zone is demonic. Because you picking people to like. And when you pick people to like and there's certain people that people know you don't like, people stop liking you. Then you get a reputation. Then you wonder why don't nobody want to talk to you after church. Because they know there's certain people in here you don't like. Yeah. Some of y'all was crazy enough to tell your kids that. As if kids don't come together and talk. I'm preaching in here. Amen. This it ain't gonna stop me from preaching now. It's getting on my nerves, but it ain't gonna stop me. I'm going to preach this message. To one, to love one another means that we are willing to accept one another, have each other's back in the time of need, and genuinely enjoy being around them. I look forward to coming to this church every Sunday because I look forward to being around the people that I care about. And I care about every one of y'all in here. And I don't show no difference. And I, hey, I care about all of y'all because there's something about each one of you to care about. There is something wonderful about everyone in here. If God beautifully and wonderfully made you, there's something wonderful about you. And as a pastor, I'm going to get to know what that is. I might have to climb over piles and piles of crap to get to the good part. <laughs> but I'm going to do it, Jay Bryan. <laughs> I'm going to do it till I find it because I care about you. And I want somebody to be that long suffering with me. Amen. Amen. Ephesians 4 and 2, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another. How? That's not just putting up with one another because you in here. We don't just put up with one another because we in here. No, you put up with one another in love. Amen. Amen. Forbear one another. You know, the reaping and sowing law. Uh, this is where it applies the most. This one right here. Because if you love and show love, you'll always feel love. Yeah. But if you're not willing to forbear 
and willing to put up and you got people you don't like and you let it be known I don't really I don't really savor that person's you're gonna be alone and wonder why folks aren't gravitating to you you're gonna be depressed you're gonna feel bad yeah because you're not sowing the right thing so you can't reap it amen you gotta sow love to reap it amen you gotta sow love to effectively accept a person you not only have to love them under the umbrella of Christendom which we all try to do well I love them with the love of the Lord because God loved me but then you gotta genuinely care about their well being yeah, you can't, man. John 13 and 34, a new commandment I give unto you that ye love one another as I have loved you. Now, did Jesus put a stipulation on his love for you? No matter how you've treated him, no matter what you've done, he still loves you. So he said, this commandment, you got to love one another like I loved you. That ye also love one another. If you dislike a fellow believer, it's hard to care about them. Uh-oh. Quit lying to yourself. Now, I don't like them, but I do care. I do no. You, no, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. Oh. If you dislike them, it's hard to care about them. As a matter of fact, when you dislike a person, you will usually either wish bad on them or you'll get that old false prophet spirit on you. Oh, see, once they cross me, God going God to deal with them. And God is dealing with you and your lonely self right now. Once they cross, once I, oh, oh, bad, some bad going to happen. When you, <laughs> oh, spooky self. <laughs> People like that get on my nerves, just spooky. Like you ain't never done anything. Yeah, but if you don't like a person or if you dislike them, you'll start either wishing bad on them or you'll envision it. And, oh, I had a dream about them. Oh, what they did to me, oh, God is not going to forget. <laughs> is God going to forget what you've done? Ooh, people need to hush. <laughs> Ephesians 4 and 31. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you. Just shut up. Amen. These evil desires come from our own low self-worth and inferiority complexes. When we feel others are looking down on us, you can't be feeling like people are looking down on you because you don't know people like that the only person you know like that is you you know when you looking down on somebody so you can't do that oh, I saw the way she looked it at me how did she looked it at you she looked and then smacked and then looked the other way I know what that means you know what it means when you do it a teeth might have been loose or something. You don't know. You don't know what's going on in her mouth. Why she's smacking. <laughs> you don't know what she was doing. Amen. But you think that she's looking down on you. And you know that's not even based on her at all. That's based on your upbringing. Something happened on your street. Little Susie Q rode, stole your bicycle and smacked at you when you was little. And now anytime somebody, you know what I'm saying? That's where it came from. I don't have nothing to do with her. We quit being like that. Somebody looking down on you or you think people think they're better than you that comes from and parents don't you do that oh let me preach this don't you do that 
Don't you do that. Make your kids think that they're better than other kids. Amen. Amen. Don't you, ooh, when they get old, that's going to come back on you. They don't do that. My children don't think they're better than anybody. And they get beat like anybody. You get beat like an old bum in the street. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When they get in trouble, man, you, I'm going to my children when they get in trouble. And I'm going to ask them. I, I, I know my kids are capable of being kids. Just like I was. So I don't ever say what my son didn't do until I ask him. Not that he's a bad kid. He's not a bad kid, but I'm going to ask him. Amen. But I'm not making them think they're better than anybody because that's going to make their life lonely when they get older. Yeah. And so what ends up happening is, man, these inferiority complexes, you you thinking you better than other, or you think people think they're better than you because you've been talking like you're better than other people. Don't do that. None of us better than anybody. Right. Amen. I'm the pastor of this church. I ain't better than nobody in here. I'm just the one with the call to lead. I'm not better. Yeah. So when we feel others are looking down on us or thinking they're better than us or rejecting us then we usually do not wish the best for them. Uh-huh, they think they got, they think they something, they got that new car. And I, I know they, I saw the way she swerved around the parking lot. <laughs> you sure looking hard. You was looking for that. You was looking for something. Try to find something wrong with the car. Because you don't have a new one. Oh, this is nice, but I mean, what's all this right here? <laughs> Well, you know, I splashed in some mud on the way up here. Oh, man, you, you, you bought it like this? What is wrong with people? Just trying to find something wrong. <laughs> yeah. Luke 6 and 37. Judge not and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not. Condemn not and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive and ye shall be given. All this is true. Get your mouth on folks. Folks won't have their mouth on you. Amen. That's what it say. Don't think you better than folks. Folks won't act like they better than you. You won't even see it that way. Stop condemning folks and you won't feel condemned. These complexes make us feel that people are against us or are talking about us behind our backs. Y'all, that's a devil. Whenever you think somebody's talking about you behind your back, that's a devil. And whoever came and told you that is working for the devil. That's some play school, some, some elementary school sandbox foolishness. So-and-so said, you know, I heard that, you know, they said, they didn't think I heard them, but... I heard what they said about y'all and, you know, I don't believe it, but I just thought y'all needed to. Don't ever come to me telling me what somebody said. I could care less. Don't come to my wife telling my wife. Don't be the tattertale. Pray. What happened to prayer? Amen. What happened to prayer? Pastor, I was over these members' house. Ooh, it's hard for me to say this. No, it's not. It ain't hard. You've been wanting to say this. That's why you went over there. That's so demonic. Why would you do that, Pastor Man? We was we was playing phase ten, and then your family came up. Ooh, I don't care. I don't care. And now I'm looking at you suspect for the rest of your tenure at this church. I'm looking cross-eyed every time I see you. I'm looking you over. Why would you come tell me that? 
Amen. This is when we begin to form negative opinions and feelings toward people. When you think people are talking behind your back, you're listening to the devil, devil whispering. Now you form in negative opinions. And you know, there's certain people in the church you, you won't ever like just because of this. You done not them out of your mind. I can never like them. My kids ain't going to like their kids. Yeah. You know how much discord you're sowing? When these negative opinions and feelings formulate in a fellowship where we're all supposed to be of like mind, have all things in common, have each other's back. Hey, I don't, I, I can preach this without hand claps. Amen. Because this is the truth. Proverbs 11 and 12. He that is void of wisdom despises his neighbor. So the person that don't have much sense and don't have a good understanding is the one that's hating, hating on folks. But a man of understanding holdeth his peace. I'm going to wait and see how this plays out. That's somebody with an understanding. It's absurd to believe that we can truly love people with animosity and negative feelings against them. True love likes as well. Amen. Clap. Yes, clap. True love, look at somebody say, true love likes, true love likes. Well, pastor, I'm having a hard time because it's just some folks I don't like. Well, then something's wrong with your love. Something's wrong with your love and you need to trace that back to your childhood or something. You need to get delivered from that because if you love you got to like. Don't come telling me you love me and don't like me. I've had people tell me that. Now, Pastor, I really don't, you know, I don't really like you and the way you do things. But you preach that word. I'm coming for the word. No, you're not. You better come for me and the word because the word's coming through me. You can't come to this church and skip over me for the word. And I got this microphone. That's so evil. Why would you say that? I remember thinking, you got the weakest husband in the world to let you jaw at me like that. He is a jive turkey. There ain't nowhere in the world my wife going to go up to a pastor and say something like that. That Jezebel witch. How you going to come tell me that? Oh, oh well, uh, You know, I don't really like you. And he's standing there. Oh, so you like him? <laughs> Crazy. That's so disrespectful. <laughs> and why you don't like me? What did I do to you? I preached that creation role message. That's what did it. And I know women. I know it's a lot of y'all in here. That message is it, a stranglehold. It got you, it, yes, I get it. It's tough. But I'm going to keep encouraging you to follow God, follow God's plan for you. It's tough. It's rough and tough, depending on your upbringing. It can be real hard. Don't go say nothing stupid like that. Don't come tell me that. That's evil. Amen. It's absurd to believe that we can have negative feelings against people and then believe we truly love them. First Peter 4 and 8 says, and above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves. Okay. Did y'all hear that? Above how many things? How much is all? So the most important thing is that you not only love each other, but you have fervent love. Because love covers a multitude of sins. Amen. So no matter, no matter how many mistakes they may have made with you, you're going to have fervent love and forgive them. And amen. Because you're going to want forgiveness. We must have conversations 
interventions and in some cases strong counsel when it comes to these feelings or we will harm our bodies and the fellowship with our bad feelings. That's what you don't want to do. You don't want to harm your own body because of these feelings. When you have negative feelings toward people, it hurts your body. Yeah, physically. You have physical ailments. Yeah, so you don't want that. So sometimes you got to have a conversation, intervention. Hey, let's get together and talk this over. Get this out, clear the air so that we can be not only loving each other, but liking each other. Yeah. Hey, man, don't sit in church with a problem with somebody. This is church. Look at somebody say it's church. it's church. You should have a problem with anybody in here. It's church. Colossians 3 and 13. Forbearing, which is putting up with one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, do what? So also do ye. Summary! Amen. Loving people with the love of the Lord is not enough. Look at somebody. Wait, ain't the love of the Lord? It ain't enough. We need to love people with our love as well. The love of the Lord and the love of you. We're trying to separate the two. Why do people do that? And then when they say it, they say it's so evil. I love it with the love of the Lord. Okay, first of all, it's not Lord. It's Lord. We got to love people with our love. Look at somebody and say, give them your love. Quit trying to give them God's love. <laughs> give them your love. Amen. We must learn to accept the fact that everyone is not going to do what we expect them to. And they may not do what we want them to do. Can you accept that? Everybody's not going to meet your expectations for the perfect human. Amen. The expectations you have on your husband or your wife. That's why they don't like you. There ain't no forgiveness, no grace, no mercy, no room for growth, error, nothing. You going to treat me right? You better treat me right. Somebody else will. No, they won't. No, they won't. Shut up. <laughs> Folk be talking big. <laughs> <to the end. laughs> yeah. So we got to accept the fact that everybody's, nobody's going to do it the way you want them to do it. Many will not, but that don't mean you dislike them. It means you forbear. How do you raise kids? Because kids, kids do dumb stuff. Am I right, kids? Do y'all do dumb stuff? Look at them. They're like, yes. Yes, I do. Yes. Yes, I do. Did some this morning. That was done. Yes. Yes, that's what we do. But you raising kids, are you forgiving the kids? Or do you still hate them for what they did? Do you not talk to the kids for weeks? You sit in a different part of the house? Or do you realize, hey, they just, they got to grow. They got to learn. Not only do they grow and learn, but they got to grow and learn my rules and how I do things. Boy, I'm preaching in here today. I know. But because we are all different and arrive into each other's lives at different levels of maturation, People are going to challenge us, upset us, disappoint us, and hurt us. So we are, none of us started out 
in the same, at the same time. We all came into each other's lives in different levels of understandings. <laughs> and if you can't bake that in to your desire to be a part of a fellowship, then you're going to have problems. When the Holy Ghost fell and the Church of Acts started, those people were from everywhere. But they learned. This is how we function together. How did they learn these letters was coming? The same letter I'm preaching to you. <laughs> Amen. So you got to put up, hey man, these people, maybe they're not as mature in that area as I am because I had to go through X, Y, and Z. They only went through A, B, and C. You see what I'm saying? Or maybe I think I'm something and I'm really not. That's the best one. Use that one. Yeah. But they're going to challenge us, upset us, disappoint us, hurt us. Your wife's going to do that. Your husband's going to do that. Your boss going to do that. The world is going to do that. You're not going to come in here and expect a perfect utopia. It's going to happen in here too because humans are here. However, if they are a part of the body of believers that we are in fellowship with, then we must love them and like them. Amen. Look at somebody say, Pastor, say, love them and like them. And sometimes you got to take it to the Lord. Lord, what is it about this person? Oh, sha ta 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 ta. Lord, what is it? And God going to show you something about you. Yeah. This, this is why this is why she's a problem God loves our differences he chooses different personalities for different tasks amen I was talking to Dr. Carter the other day and I said doctor you crazy I said but God used it he used that in 2017, God came and got you and put you on that platform to straighten a whole denomination out. I said, because you was crazy enough to get up there and say what God wanted you to say. I said, and God will use crazy. And he was like, well, I don't know how I feel about you calling me crazy. I said, well, in a good way. I said, but Jehu was crazy. Jehu was the, one of the craziest kings in the Bible. But that's who God got to kill Jezebel. God's prophet, Elijah, second greatest next to John, second greatest prophet in the Bible to me, was scared of Jezebel. He ran from her and hid. So what did God do? God said, you know what? I need somebody crazy. I got to find me somebody crazy enough to not be scared of this chick. Sometimes you got to be so crazy, you don't even understand scared. <laughs> he was too crazy to be scared. And Jehu came riding up. She painted herself. She was like, uh-huh, you coming? Uh-huh, I see you. So he came riding up. He said, Okay, who's on, the, who's on my side? Y'all on my side? Throw her down here. Just crazy. Throw her down there. The Bible said he on the horse. He, now this is the wife of a king. You don't do that to the wife of a king. But if you crazy, you do. He rode that horse. Boom, boom, boom. Then he parked it. Er, got out. Went and ate. The Bible says he went inside and ate. Then after he finished eating, he said, oh yeah, she's a, 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 a queen. So we can't just leave her. Y'all go get her now. <laughs> and they went and said, ain't none of her left. The dogs that ate her up. Oh, okay, well. All right then. <laughs> Jehu was crazy. Jehu didn't do nothing else God told him to do except that. He got his 
so much trouble. <laughs> he did everything wrong except for that. And God said, that's all I need. That's all I need. So he uses personalities. He'll use your personality to do something when it's time to do it. Amen. When I was growing up, my mama and boy, they used to get nervous whenever I went over anybody's house, anything, because I'd be looking around and, and they'd be like, oh Lord, what is he about to say? And I just. <sighs> Y'all ain't gonna ever clean this carpet. <laughs> that used to make them so nervous. I don't remember it, but they tell, I've heard stories. Are those stories true, mother? I've heard stories. They take me anywhere, and then they just look at me, and I'm just. <laughs> but see how God used that? Now I'm crazy enough to say whatever God want me to say. No matter where I go, I'm going to say what God want me to say. That's my personality, Jay Brod. God uses a personality. So you can't cancel folks because you don't like them and God may have a purpose for that. Yeah. Amen. He loves our differences. He chooses different personalities for different tasks. And if we can deny ourselves, thus our individual emotions, feelings, and issues for the greater good of the fellowship, then God can use us. Can you deny yourself? Can you walk in the church and not worry about what anybody's saying about you? Thinking about you. Feeling about you. Giving your kids instructions for you. Go, okay, now when we go to church, now you know sister so-and-so don't like me, so we ain't going to go. To the you going to church. You going to church. You ain't going to half off half. Yeah, you don't need a game plan going to church. When we can walk in love and forgiveness, have a repentant heart, and willing to do the right thing for the sake of the fellowship, then God can find pleasure in us and bless us. Many today could be healed of their physical infirmities and lifted up out of their emotional trauma if they would only learn to like the ones they love. Mm. 1 Corinthians 13 and 4, love is patient. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy. See, you talking about you love? You love them with the love of the Lord? Well, here you go. Here's the love of the Lord. Here's love. If you love them, here's love. And every one of these things I'm about to read encompasses like. Love is patient and love is kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way or always being right. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears how many things? It believes how many things? Hopes, how many things? And this is the big one. It endures all things. Everyone stand to your feet. Can't just love, you gotta like to. Amen. I'm just going to open the altar up for those that need that love and like to merge together. Amen. Come on up. It's okay. Okay. Love and like. Merge them together. Merge them together. Everybody in here, you ought to be able to hug and mean it. You ought to be able to hug and mean it. You my girl. You my man. You my Ride or die, we in this together. There's nothing about you 
that I dislike like that. I want to love. Love you. For real. Like you. For real. Help me love, Lord. Help me like the ones I say I love. Anyone else? Hallelujah. Everyone bow your heads. Father God, we just thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for this message. Thank you, Lord, for just helping us to grow as a fellowship. God, we don't want to expand the building and not expand our hearts toward one another. We don't want to expand the building and not expand our love for one another. God, we don't want to welcome strangers and not love those that have been in this fight with us for so long we want to like them and love them we don't want the enemy God taking one of our childhood issues or our childhood disposition and, and exploiting it and messing up our family and messing up our kids we're not going to let the cycle continue this is how they got the way they were we're going to stop it now and Father help us Lord God to love like you love to love the way we're supposed to love Father God, help us, Father, to love those that are a part of this fellowship and to truly like them to where we will do anything for them, Lord. We'll help them in their time of need. We'll pray for them when they need prayer. Father God, we will be there for them in true love. We won't fail them. Help us, Father God, to love one another the way you want us to. And forgive us, God. Forgive us for allowing childhood trauma, adulthood trauma, situations, errors, whatever, interfere with the way we have felt about your people. Interfere with the way we felt about each other. Any thoughts, malicious thoughts, hateful, jealous, envious thoughts, whatever, Father God, we cancel all of those now. And we're going to love the way you want us to love. Father God, we're going to love each other. We're going to reform friendships and bonds. God, some of these people, Lord, we've grown to know for many years. And we're not going to let the enemy separate us from your love. Your powerful love. And we want to be blessed by you, Lord. So we want to please you with our actions toward one another. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Lord. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. How many of you meant that prayer? You really meant it. You really meant it. Hey Amen. Well, hug somebody and tell them, I love you. And I like you. Come on. I like you and I love you. I love you and I like you. I love you. I like you. I like you and I love you. I do. I do. I do. I do. There's no difference in me and you. I love you and I like you. I like you and I love you. Amen. <laughs>